and we are going to continue right here on Live Now from Fox with more live feeds that are coming in. It looks like we are going to have an update on the, uh, whoop, it just went to color bar there, but uh, that is out in Dallas. Looks like another update coming possibly soon on uh, the shooting that happened at the high school. So we'll keep an eye on that. We do have President Biden speaking right now. Let's listen on Live Now from Fox. Greatly restrict no-knock warrants, advance effective and accountable community policing, a promise kept to sign the most significant gun safety law in decades, the first law making lynching a federal hate crime, keeping my promise that no one should be in federal prison for merely possessing marijuana, a promise kept to advance envir environmental justice and to make the most significant investments in climate ever in all of our history. That's delivering clean energy and jobs all across America. The results are real. We've reduced black unemployment rate to its record low. More black Americans have health insurance than ever before. More black businesses are starting up than we've seen in the last 25 years. In fact, despite attacks on our support for brown and black small businesses, we're investing in them as key ways to build generational wealth in communities. Today, I'm proud to announce that last year we awarded $76 billion in federal contracts to small disadvantaged businesses to level the playing field and close the racial wealth gap. I also want to thank my dear friend, HUD Secretary Marsha Fudge, for an amazing career of public service, for leading the charge and making housing more affordable for proposing a $10,000 tax first time home $10,000 tax credit for first time home buyers to building more rental unit more rental units to bring rents down than ever before we've launched a major effort to root out bias in home appraisal process so homes in black communities are no longer undervalued compared to the same home in a white community thus far We've eliminated that gap by 40%, and we're going to continue till it's even. Put it all together, black wealth is up 60%, up 60%, and the racial wealth gap has closed the most in 20 years. You know, I would argue this is transformational change. We know there's much more work to do. There are real threats we face. There are more extreme voices out there who simply don't want to see people of color in the future of our country. They want to turn back the clock, voter suppression, election suppression, ripping away reproductive freedom, getting affirmative action, gutting it, and attacking diversity across American life, banning books. This is 2024, banning books, attempting to erase history, embracing political violence like what happened on January the 6th. These extremists are determined to erase the progress we've made. But together, we are determined to make history, not erase it. Make history, not erase it. Let me close with this, Rev. You know, we face a moment of choosing at a time when our very democracy is at stake. And that's not an exaggeration. Our democracy is at stake. One vision is propelled by anger, hate, revenge, and retribution. The other vision, our vision, your vision, of perseverance, progress, hope, and optimism and everything the National Action Network stands for and embodies. Here's the future we can build together. I see in America where we defend democracy, we don't diminish it. I see America where, with your help, I signed the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act into law, where I signed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act into law, where we make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again, and we can do that. I see a future where we give hate no safe harbor, call out the poison of white supremacy. I see an America where the economy grows from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down, and where the wealthy finally begin to pay their fair share of taxes, where working people finally have a fair shot with child care, elder care, paid leave. We're one of the only nations in the world that doesn't have paid leave. I see a future where we save the planet from a climate crisis and our country from gun violence. You know, <clears throat> my administration just yesterday expanded back, two days ago, expanded background checks. But that's not enough. 
We'll ban assault weapons, high capacity magazines, because we did it once, we got to do it again. We must get it done. And folks, I know we can do this. I've never been more optimistic about our future. You know, we just remember who we are. We're the United States of America. We've come out of every crisis stronger than we've gone into it. And there's nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we act together. So let's keep acting together. I'm looking to you for help. I'm looking to you for leadership. And I hope you look to me for the same. God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you very much. On Israel is from Iran, Mr. President. I want to get a secure information, but my expectation sooner than later. What's your next president? Mr. President, what is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Are American personnel and assets at risk, Mr. President? Mr. President, are American troops at risk as well? We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel, and Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. Well, we're sure you're... All right, President Biden taking some questions uh, there right after uh, his remarks at the National Action Network, talking about the threats uh, from uh, Iran to Israel, and then also backing Israel as well, saying that uh, the U.S. support will continue for Israel. So again, we will keep an eye on the movements there in Israel and if and there are any reports of strikes against Israel from Iran, of course, we will be updating you on those matters as well.